The year, 1964. The location, the state capitol. The issue, a public accommodations bill. Well, you were denied those rights to go into a public place of public accommodation, into a restaurant, into a hotel, into a drugstore, sit down and have a, a soda like anybody else. Diabetes stole Clovis Campbell's eyesight in recent years, but the state's first black senator vividly remembers the protest of March 30th, 1964. Campbell was a member of the House of Representatives. You had a bunch of young people who uh, held far bent on making sure that the message got across. We wanted to public accommodation bill. Unfortunately, the police started to come down and want to arrest people because they start blocking off entrances to the uh, state bill. Brooks was president of a local chapter of the NAACP. He and Vice President Lincoln Ragsdale Sr. coordinated the protest. These pictures belong to the Ragsdale family. We made a conscious decision to confront the Senate, particularly where Senator Giss of Yuma was stonewalling on the public accommodations bill. The bill would force businesses to end decades of discrimination toward African Americans. I traveled with white Presbyterian preachers, all of whom were young, and, um, and we could not eat at restaurant. I remember one evening we went into a restaurant and we sat and we sat, and obviously these young white men did not understand. And finally I, I said, we are not going to be served. The protest could have erupted into more of an emotional confrontation, but police treated protesters gently, using blankets to carry people out of the Capitol. Governor Paul Fennin wanted no violence. Paul Fennin had very poor understanding of how a class of people in, this, in these United States could, be, uh, could feel be left out. Um, Paul understanding that, that what we give them should be enough for them. And, and we, we don't kick them around. We don't do anything with them or for them. Brooks vividly recalls an encounter with an aspiring attorney who vehemently opposed the bill. A young man came out and accosted me as leader of that group and, um, and to say that public accommodation was not necessary. And, and gave, giving all of his legal reasons why we ought not to have it and, and the reason why we ought to be still. And that young man was Mr. Rehnquist, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. Everybody get in. Lawmakers eventually passed the Public Accommodations Bill, but after Congress approved the Civil Rights Act of 1964. I welcome the protest because he did do some things. He did make some people stand up and listen, even though uh, it took a while to get it passed. For those who participated, such as Clay Kavnis, the protest was a validation of sorts. Here was this backwater, which was very conservative, uh, which was untouchable by outside currents. We were very much behind the times, and here we were just participating in the energy of the times. It was not supposed to, to be expressed here, and, and it was, so it was, it was very gratifying. For Reverend George Brooks, the protests set the stage for later civil rights victories. We've come a, a, a long way, but so has society. Society in the, and the whole has gone much further than we as a class of people have gone.